If you have been on a ship for a longer time, you will know this strange feeling when you are back on solid ground. The ground seems to sway like on the ship before. This feeling normally goes away after a few minutes or hours. If you have been on a longer trip, it can take till next morning. About three quarters of all sailors report of this sense of wavering. It's either forward, backward, up and down, or side ones when they go on land, but as I said, it disappears in the next 24 hours. But for some unhappy few, these symptoms persist for weeks, months, or even years. Um, after a two week trip um, uh, cruise, uh, I got off the ship and was felt like I was still on the ship. And this feeling stayed with me um, over a, a full summer and um, it got worse as the summer went on. Um, that feeling was a, a swaying back and forth, um, like you're trying to stand up in a rowboat. It's a, a very unsettling feeling. Uh, you're off balance. Everything that you thought you could do physically suddenly is not possible anymore. Distinct data about the frequency of the complaints are missing. It's called MDDS from the French mal de débarquement. Mal means disease, débarqué, leaving a ship. Now this feeling consists in some kind of wavering in all directions, similar like being on a boat. Some patients say they are on a small boat and with short movements and others seem to be on an ocean liner. Most frequently, the movement takes about four to seven seconds from one side to the other. Especially after a longer flight, you may have the impression that it's still going up and down, like in an escalator. In addition to the core symptoms, most of the patients have some more complaints. Drowsiness, dizziness, nausea, coordination problems, disorientation, headache, fatigue, a higher sensitivity to noise, smell or light, poor concentration, tinnitus, increased anxieties, depression and other functional disorders. There is still very little knowledge about MDDS. However, there are come indicators that the following group are more frequently affected. These are women, persons who are prone to seasickness, depression and anxieties. And of course, you must have had a longer trip on a boat, plane or train. As for my personal observation, it seems to me that persons with a higher sensitivity, a higher level of commitment and perfectionists are particularly affected. Overall, the causes are poorly understood. They checked if it was with my ear and they, my ears and uh, it was not. Uh, the neurologist was worried about any diseases that I might have contracted underway. Um, they said after doing an MRT um, that uh, it wasn't that, so it was a brain thing and I was given different drugs to take, one of them very strong. Uh, uh, an, a drug for epilepsy um, that made it far, far worse. Um, the other things that I was given were um, motion sickness drugs. Um, really, no one knew uh, what I had or what it was about and uh, couldn't really help. However, it is clear that the so-called vestibulo-ocular reflex is of central importance. To understand this, here are some considerations. When you turn your head, the retina of your eyes catches a new image. But how do you know that you have turned and not the world around you? This is possible because at the same time, 
your vestibular organ, the muscles of the neck, they provide further information. They tell you, you have actively turned your head. The brain processes this in the information, the world is stable, you have moved. You can learn the importance of the vestibular ocular reflex in this three-step experiment. Take a text, a book, a newspaper, and read some lines while moving your head up and down 30 degrees, 20, 30 degrees, while constantly nodding like saying yes, yes, yes. You will see you can read it reasonably well. Now hold your head steady and move the text up and down 20, 30 degrees in the same rhythm as before. You will quickly realize much more difficult. And finally, ask a partner to move the sheet up and down at about the same speed and angle, and you will see completely unreadable. The explanation. In the first case, you have received a lot of information about space and movement via the eyes, of course, the muscles, the vestibular organs, especially the muscles of your arms and neck. In the second case, the additional information of, came only from the arms and the eye, and in the third case, we relied completely on your eyes. Now, you see that this alone is not sufficient. The eyes perform complex compensatory movements during the movement of our head. Left, right, up and down, even a certain rotation is possible. The neck, the back, the muscles of your legs also contribute in stabilization. In all these muscles, there are sensors that inform about the tension and the position. In seafaring, or similar movement, the body is constantly moving. The system of eyes, vestibular organ, muscles, and all above, the central nerve systems work like a stabilization system of a camera. Despite the movement, subjectively, a stable picture of the outside world emerges. You can bounce on a trampoline and perceive the outside world as being stable. You might easily talk to someone and could possibly watch a TV show at the same time. If you take a video camera onto the trampoline, you can immediately see the drastic difference between the shaky film recorded and the stable image that you yourself have observed. In short, we have an extremely advanced stabilization system built in that even state-of-the-art video cameras cannot match. Although a mal de débarquement syndrome is not scientifically fully understood, we assumed that it's all about a lacking reset. On a ship, the brain has successfully adjusted to this situation of swaying and does not manage to recorrect to firm ground. It stays in sway mode, boat mode, and continues to provide the information needed to balance out the swings in this environment. So when you step from the boat, you still put your feet in a way that would be perfect during the cruise. One foot is a bit higher, the other a bit lower. On firm ground, this is no longer adequate. The consequence? You have the feeling you step in a hole or you stumble. This is of course very irritating. What happens now is a bit strange. As the body is irritated, he clinched to the last working solution and that was on the ship. Of course, this leads to more dizziness and so forth. In a way, you might compare this to a neurosis. When we are under considerable stress, we activate early solutions that have worked perfectly in our childhood. So now you can very well understand why all the symptoms go away the very moment you get back on a boat, a car, a plane, a train, etc. The internal organization of movement is consistent again with the rocking surface in the plane, etc. But actually, most patients are not very eager to step on a boat again, as you might easily think. Dizziness causes anxiety. 
A very common solution is therefore avoidance. Many people find out that lying on a couch is just great. No dizziness at all. Standing or walking makes it worse. But resting is not an optimal training for our balance system. After a single week of bed rest, most people suffer from initial dizziness or walking insecurity. And there's another problem. When you stay in bed for weeks, you will develop circulatory problems when you get up into upright positions. Quite a few patients will get complaints which resemble POTS, postural tachycardia symptom. Main problem, in the stationary problem, their heart beats very fast and they are very fatigued. As a consequence, they tend to seek even more bed rest. So, anyone who thinks that walking is dangerous is easily trapped in a vicious circle which leads to further dizziness. This is also true for elder people who have been bedridden for a while. What can you do? First, avoid avoidance. If you have MDDS, the couch and the bed is the most dangerous place for you. You have to recalibrate your balance system. Therefore, exercise, more exercise, and even more exercise is necessary. The biggest problem, while you practice, the dizziness will get more and this causes fear. The first requirement for practice is therefore safety and inner reassurance. This calming of anxieties is therefore crucial in the beginning of the therapy. Do not be afraid, that's easy to say. Anyone who suffers from dizziness, however, feels unsettled. Therefore, in addition to education, we also rely on a soothing atmosphere, perceived physical and psychological security. To convey this sensually, we use massage, warmth, relaxation procedures. You just tell your body everything is fine. But this is only the first step. More important is the second. Now the feeling of balance must be reorganized. It all depends on the interaction between the perceived movement of the body and your eyes. Despite all outer movement, the body is perceived as being stable. Therefore, we expose the body to numerous impulses of motion, walking on a smooth or irregular ground, hopping, tilting table, head movement with changing pictures, wobble plate, running with reduced gravity and video animations. Even learning how to juggle trains the coordination between the eye and the body movement. One of the most important trainings is the retraining of the eye movement and the body movement. Maybe it's the core element of the therapy. So we have to find out exactly what kind of movement will trigger your dizziness. This might be on a trampoline. While you stand there and sway, you will try to recalibrate your eye movements. Mostly we use moving stripes that you look at. Or you walk and turn your head while moving your eyes left and right. Through all these exercises, the body learns to override the old movement pattern, the one which was very nice on a boat. We found too that breathing techniques are essential for fast progress. Here the level of CO2 in the blood seems to be more important. In the course of a special breathing training, we try to raise this CO2 level in blood. Another basic principle of training is repetition. Instead of occasionally practicing for months, it is much more effective to immerse yourself in a therapy and to gain new experiences over many hours. Therefore, intensive therapies with plenty of sensory experiences are much more effective than in half an hour of physiotherapy per week. What can you do? First, stay calm. Avoid avoidance and try to keep moving. Do not withdraw, but keep seeing other people. Do not avoid trains, cars or planes. If the symptoms are severe and most of all worrying, then you probably need professional help.
Unfortunately, such a training is very rare and very difficult to find. Here in Mannheim, Germany, close to Frankfurt, we usually carry out a therapy which lasts one to three weeks. Usually, this is sufficient. It does not necessarily mean that all the complaints have disappeared 100%. On a scale from 0 to 10, the dizziness when I arrived was a 10, or a 10 plus, as I like to say. When you look back, you had a 10 when you came. How is the vertigo dizziness by now, after 12 days? Um, the dizziness has gone down, I would say, on the average to a 5, because it's still hops up when I uh, change positionally, or if I'm out of breath. But by the end of the therapy, you should have all the tools in your hand to be able to help yourself in the future. I'm, I'm completely set up with exercises, I've written them all down. Um, one of the girls even sat with me and watched me write them down to make sure I would write it down, <laughs> which is very true and very good. Um, each member of the team here gave me something different to do or something that they saw about me personally. In other words, it's sufficient to reduce dizziness and show you the further way you can walk alive. Thanks for your attention and if you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to write an email.